Let's take a trip back to 2005. Shaktiman was my beloved superhero, internet was booming and YouTube just came to life. Social media was also budding and MySpace was the biggest player, even overtaking Google in user numbers. In October of that same year, 19-year-old Sammy Kamkar, tech savvy kid, got curious with MySpace to see if he could get around the restrictions like maybe upload more photos than allowed, just trying to impress his friends. His tinkering led to a discovery. He could alter not just his profile but of others too. As a fun prank, he created a script which he called Sammy Worm which made anyone visiting his profile automatically add him as a friend and also added the line but most of all Sammy is my hero to the person's profile and it didn't just stop there the worm replicated itself onto the visitor's profile as well spreading like wildfire chaos ensued Sammy's friend request count skyrocketed to over a million leading to reports of hacking from people in a panic Sammy deleted his account but this in turn removed all the other infected profiles as well and in a few minutes MySpace went down the company had to take the site offline to figure out what was going on and to remove the worm Sammy owned up to his mistakes and faced the consequences and the worm it didn't do any real harm beyond spreading his name, but it did reveal a major vulnerability. It was a classic case of cross-site scripting or excesses, where malicious attackers could trick websites and browsers into executing a custom piece of code. Its history is interesting, and it's a result of the chaotic nature of internet's evolution from mid-90s to today. Companies were competing to capitalize on the early boom of the web, figuring it out on the go. No one bothered with security much. I mean, JavaScript, the language that dominates web now, was created in just 10 days in 1995 by young Brendan Eich. He worked for Netscape at the time and was pressured by the management as they were competing with Microsoft. The name cross-site scripting can be a bit confusing, but the concept cross-site is the idea of embedding a script from one side to another, effectively crossing the boundary between the sites. Over time, it has evolved to include various types and innovative ways, but the core idea remains the same. That is executing JavaScript in a user's browser context that the browser or the user did not intend to execute, often leading to unauthorized access or information leakage. Excesses comes mainly in three different flavors, stored, reflected, and DOM-based. First, stored excesses, like Sammy's worm, involves attackers submitting the script, which then gets stored just like normal data on the site and permanently leaves the malicious script on the website, like in wait, like digital landmines waiting to be executed. Another classic example was this infamous tweet back from 2014 that auto-liked and retweeted itself if you saw it. Reflected accesses, on the other hand, tricks you into clicking a link the attacker crafts. If I search Google for something, for example, see the search term is included as part of the URL in the query parameter. This is where the new results page knows what you search for and can show it in the UI. Now, luckily, Google is secure, but there is a possibility of reflected accesses here on vulnerable sites. Let me show this to you on Google's Grovia. That's a code lab designed to be vulnerable, offering users ways to learn about cybersecurity in a safe and controlled environment. It's named after a cheese that has lots of holes in it, symbolizing vulnerable in an application. I've started a session and at the end of the link, let me add the script which just alerts your cookies back to me. If I hit enter, simulating you clicking this link, boom, the script executes and I get back your cookies. That is, it redirects you and reflects the script back to your browser and executes it. And finally, DOM-based accesses exploits vulnerability within the page's document object model or DOM allowing attackers to manipulate the page. This is why the use of inner HTML attribute isn't encouraged. Even React's documentation explicitly warns this, and they call the property dangerously set inner HTML. In short, excesses is dangerous, and if you don't take measures against it, it's like leaving your house keys under the mat, inviting trouble. So how do you safeguard against cross-site scripting? Well, if you're a web developer looking to protect your site, you can start by sanitizing all user inputs, including forms. Ensure that all user inputs are checked and cleaned before being used on the page. Libraries like DOM Purify can help you. You can also configure your server to use content security policies or CSP headers. When a CSP is implemented, it restricts the locations from which resources like scripts, style sheets, images can be loaded. So even if an attacker manages to inject a malicious script into your page, the browser would refuse to execute it if the source is enlisted in your CSV. This significantly reduces the risk. On top of that, you can also use HTTP security headers, regularly audit your site, especially your NPM package using the NPM audit command, and adopting secure coding practices. It's always good to be safe than sorry. Now, if you're just browsing the internet, it's about staying vigilant. Educate yourself about the web. Be cautious of the links that look suspicious, even on familiar websites and prioritize your online privacy. But even then, there were shocking revelations about the reality of online privacy. Let's come back to Sami Kamkar. After facing the legal consequences, Sami took a constructive path in life of teaching cybersecurity. 
is a well-known figure in the space for various projects that highlight security issues in modern tech. Sammy did eventually become everyone's hero. One such project was Evercookie, which he created in 2010. It showed a possible way of spying from website using an extremely persistent cookie that responds. This means websites using this method can track users even if they delete the previously stored cookies. But that's not the scary part. In 2013, Edward Snowden leaked a top secret NSA document that showed Evercookie can track even Tor browser users. You don't know, Tor browser is used to access the dark web because it's known for being secure and anonymous. Yeah, it's scary if you think about the ways you can be tracked online. Now, if you want to know how companies use normal third-party cookies to track you, check out this quick short we did on our channel linked up at the top. And now for everyone watching, including the FBI agent that may be listening, do let me know your feedback, like, share and subscribe and stay safe out there. And yeah, thanks for watching.